After this video, I'm about to go to bed. I've been just thinking about all of the preachers, the so-called preachers that have fallen away from Christ. It is absolutely mind-blowing at the number of preachers, pastors, that all of a sudden decided to turn their backs on Christ. Some have become atheists, saying that there is no God, knowing that the scriptures say, a fool has said in his heart that there is no God. But there are a great number of preachers that have turned away and is now saying that God is not real and that Jesus don't exist. There is a difference between a backslidden preacher and a backslider. Just a regular Sunday morning Christian. Someone that's constantly, repeatedly working on themselves, trying to better themselves. That refer to themselves as children of the Most High. The Bible says that he is married to the backslider. But what I find interesting is that preachers, although that God is faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness, the Bible says that it's impossible for a preacher to come back to Christ. So it's almost like there is no hope for preachers that backslide, that turn away. And it's a dangerous thing to talk to a preacher, a backslidden preacher, because he know exactly what to say to manipulate the word. You're a babe in Christ. Your heart is in the right place. And in your mind, in your heart, you want to gain that soul. You want to save. You want that preacher to be saved. But I want to take the time out to show you the difference between a backslidden preacher and the average, everyday, backsliding Christian. The first scripture I want to take you to is Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, the sixth chapter. Reading the first to the sixth verse. And this is in regards to preachers. And I want you to pay close attention. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. In other words, leaving behind all of the basics, everything that you had to go through or steps you had to take to be saved, the very basic principles of salvation. It says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance. So there is no need for you to repent. Start over again. Because that's in the past. It's now time for maturity. It says not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. So there should be no issue with your faith. There should be no doubt or confusion when it comes to your faith in God. And this is referring to preachers. 
The second verse says, of the doctrine of baptism. So there's no need for you to be baptized again. You know, on Sunday morning, how people come back and they say that they, you know, had fallen away, they had uh, backslidden and they want to come back to Christ and they want to be baptized again. Well, this is telling the preachers not laying again the foundations of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God and of the doctrine of baptism and of the laying on of hands and of the resurrection from the dead and of eternal judgment. There should be no question in mind because you being a preacher, you being a minister of Christ, you saying that God called you and anointed you. This should be far beyond you. The third verse says, and this will we do if God permit. Now the fourth verse says, for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost. In other words, this is someone that operated in the spirit of the Most High. You operated in the, as some say, the fivefold ministry gift. You've actually seen God work. You know how God worked in your life. So it's saying that it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift. In other words, you know better and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and of the powers of the world to come. You had a glimpse of that when you preached, when you operated in the spirit of Christ, you were actually experiencing the powers of the world to come. The sixth verse says, if it shall, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So this is not saying that a preacher can't repent and come back but it's saying that it's impossible for you to come back. It's impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come if they shall fall away, in other words, if they shall backslide, turn away from Christ, to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. It's impossible for a backslidden preacher to come back. It's impossible. I've seen it happen before. Preachers that backslid and tried to come back. They came back for a little while, but it wasn't the same. And I've also seen backslidden preachers. You had young Christians that would go out witnessing and evangelizing in the street. And they run upon a backslidden preacher. And the preacher knows that they've backslidden, that he has backslidden. And he knows that they're, they're, they're new in Christ, that they're babes in Christ. And he would sit there and he would use the word to manipulate them and to confuse them. Because that's his guard, that's his protection. He don't want to be saved, especially from a babe. A babe can't tell him anything in his mind. 
And it's going to be impossible for him to come back. So there's a difference between a backslidden preacher and the average everyday backslidden Christian. Now I'm going to read another scripture to you. The book of Jeremiah, the third chapter, reading the 21st to the 23rd verse. A voice was heard upon the high places weeping and supplications of the children of Israel. For they have perverted their way and they have forgotten the Lord their God. The 22nd verse says, Return, ye backslidden children, and I will hear your backslidings. Behold, we come unto thee, for thou art the Lord our God. The 23rd verse says, Truly in vain is salvation hoped for from the hills and from the multitude of mountains. Truly in the Lord our God is the salvation of Israel. So in this Scripture is saying to return ye backslidden children and now we heal your backslidings. He said he would heal your backslidings. And then it says, behold, we come unto thee for thou art the Lord our God. The last and final verse I want to read is Jeremiah, the third chapter, reading the 14th to the 15th verse. And it says, Turn, O backsliding children, saith the Lord, for I am married unto you, and I will take you, one of a city, and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. In the 15th verse it says, and I will give you pastors according to my heart, which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. So if you've backslidden from Christ, if you turned away, God is married to the backslider. All you need to do is repent. Turn away from the wrong you're doing. And be sincere when you ask God to forgive you. The Bible says if we say we have no sins, we are lie and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us. He is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from unrighteousness. In many cases, it's hard for us to return because we don't forgive ourselves. We can't stop thinking of the wrong that we've done. Even when it comes to your secret sins, it's the secret sins that torment you the most. The things that are hidden from the human eyes that you know what was done in the dark. But the Bible says if you confess your sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you from unrighteousness. But when it comes to the backslidden preacher, the Bible says, for it is impossible for those, for those who were once enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God and the powers of the world to come, if they shall fall away to renew them again unto repentance, seeing they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame. So it's a dangerous thing to try to go up against or debate a backslidden preacher. It's a dangerous thing. You stay away from them. You run from them and don't listen to them because they will corrupt your thinking. 
they will corrupt your thinking if you listen to them. Because now they have become the agents of Satan. Wolves in sheep clothing. So you have to really be mindful when you go up against, and there's a lot of them on YouTube. Preachers that have fallen away and and and, and joined the so-called black conscious community. And they tell you Jesus don't exist. And in the same time they're denying Christ and referring to themselves as atheists, they're quoting the Bible. But because you don't know the scriptures, you don't know they're quoting the Bible because they're not giving you the verse and the chapter. They're just saying it. And you thinking what they're saying is deep, but what they're repeating to you is the scriptures. The same scripture they deny and they say contradict itself. But they quote it to make a point and you don't know because you error for not knowing the scriptures nor the power thereof. So it's a dangerous thing to go up against a backslidden preacher. So feedback, tell me what you think. Is mind blowing because we're living in times now. This is not the right time to start doubting God. This is not the right time to turn away from God and to deny Christ. This is not the right time to do that. We're living in the last of the last days. And many of us will perish. We talk about that mark of the beast, but many of us will perish before that mark comes. So each day that we wake up, we're given another chance to repent, to turn away from doing evil, to be godly sorry. But because of the stubbornness and the foolishness of our hearts, we fight against our own salvation. And I will be doing a video on Revelation because that's a heavy book. And there's a lot of preachers that fear the book of Revelation. They refuse to preach from the book of Revelation because they fear it. But I'm going to be teaching from the book of Revelation soon. So stay tuned, subscribe. Share the video. Until next time, I'm fearless.